Okay, g'day everybody. Welcome to another toot. Uh, today we've got a bit of fun, something very, very interesting. This is a great, great topic. Uh, it's called AOS versus SOA, or Array of Structures versus Structure of Arrays. Uh, this is just going to be a general discussion of what it, what it means. Uh, it's going to be an introduction to um, the topic and an example, I think. Um, it's really, really important. This concept is really important in parallel uh, programming, particularly for performance coding. Uh, it doesn't often come up, like, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't often come up in serial coding. But if you're using SIMD or stream processing hardware, like your GPU, um, this topic can be invaluable. Yeah, uh, but we'll have a look. So the question is, what is it, and does it really matter? I think I've inadvertently answered already. <laughs> uh, but the easiest way to describe the difference between AOS and SOA I think is with an example. So let's say that what we want to do is um, create a bunch of quadratics. This is just going to be a, a little example. I'm going to use a quadratic equation because I quite like it. It's, it's not as simple as just adding two numbers together, say, but it's still simple enough that I think, um, yeah, it won't detract from the um, crux of the truth, which is AOS versus SOA. So here's my uh, structure. Uh, I might use to store quadratics. So it's just a collection of floats, A, B, and C. So those would be the coefficients to your quadratics. And we're going to be using the quadratic equation. So that's that, um, you know, negative B plus or minus the root of, what is it, B squared minus 4AC over 2A. Um, if you're not familiar with the quadratic equation, just look it up on Wikipedia. Uh, but that's what we've got just there. So that's our structure. Um, now let's have a look at an array of structures, AOS. What we're going to do is create an array of 2 to the power of 24 random A, B, C values. So we're going to create roughly 16 million of those quadratics and store them in a gigantic array. And let's say that what we want to do is, using the quadratic equation, calculate the roots for um, each of those quadratics. So we pretty much just want to calculate 16 million um, roots to quadratic equations. Um, yeah, the actual algorithm that we're doing here is pretty irrelevant. Like, it doesn't matter if you're doing quadratic roots or whatever, but I'm just using it as an example. Uh, so this might be your code here. We'll have a look at um, examples at the end, too. But uh, we've got const int count, and that just defines 16 million. Um, quadratic E star equals new quadratic count, so that gives us 16 million of those quadratics. And then I just use your um, rand and mod 100 minus 50 to generate random a, b, and c values for each of those quadratics. Okay, so the straightforward way to do this, um, this is array of structures. The straightforward way to do this is just with a loop in C++ serial code. So for each of those 16 million quadratics, we would just do the quadratic equation. So that's what this horrible code down here is. Um, yeah, just for i equals 0, while i is less than 16 million, off you go, bro. <laughs> that's the straightforward way to do it. Uh, and that's fair enough, you know, so what? But the trouble, the trouble is that we're missing a potential performance gold mine here. A modern x86 CPU has SIMD. Yeah. Uh, it could, at least in theory, calculate four of these roots per iteration of the loop using the magical and very wondrous SSE instruction set. Um, we could, in theory, quarter the number of iterations through that loop. Yeah, so quartering the number of iterations through a loop is a big saving. So at least in theory, um, we might be able to get some really good performance here if we're, if, if we're careful enough. Uh, it mightn't always matter. The for loop on the previous slide will generally do the trick. Um, yeah, it doesn't often come up that you actually want to calculate 16 million quadratic equations, but if you do, uh, and if you want to do it really fast, there is at least a glimmer of hope, an enticing possibility that we might be able to use four-way SIMD to absolutely fly. Uh, but there's a problem. So at the moment, our RAM looks something like this. Um, we've got the A0. Um, coefficient right there in RAM, and beside that is B0, the float for the B value of the first uh, quadratic. Then we've got C0, and after that we've got the um, yeah the same values for the second quadratic in the array. In the array, so we've got A0, B0, C0, then A1, B1, C1, uh, A2, B2, C2, etc., etc., and that's going to go all the way up to 
um, A, 16 million, B, 16 million, etc., etc. But the trouble is, when we read this into an SSE register, and we're trying to do some SIMD, uh, what we'll read is A0, B0, C0, A1. Yeah, so the four uh, packed floats will yeah, just be read into the SSE register, and that's no good to us. Um, we'd have to read a whole bunch more data, and then we'd have to do a lot of shuffling around, because what we want is the four A values. So we want A0, A1, A2, and A3 to be in one regis register. Uh, we want four B values to be in another register, and four C values to be in a third register. Uh, which would require an awful lot of shuffling after we read these values in. Um, that's what we want uh, for SIMD to give us a good performance gain. Um, but quite frankly, the shuffling will far outweigh uh, any benefits we'd otherwise get from SIMD. So we don't want the entire quadratic in a single register. What we would want is um, three SSE registers. Uh, one with the first four A values, one with the first four B values, and then one with the first four C values. That way we could easily perform the um, SIMD quadratic and uh, cut the iterations of our for loop in uh, quarters. Uh, but like I said, it takes too much reading and shuffling. So the A's, the B's, and C's to get into our registers and use uh, SSE is just a complete waste of time. Uh, poor old SSE is shuffling so many floats around that it's probably going to work out slower. Yeah, so you're better off actually using serial C++ code. So SSE in this particular instance is not at all useful here, and it can't help us. It's actually slower. Or is it? <laughs> Let's just rewind a second. Let's go backwards. Let's rewind and imagine that we did a seemingly very strange thing. Um, we didn't store our data in the normal way to start with. Uh, instead of using an array of quadratic structures like we did before, let's just make one structure called quads and let's give it three arrays. Yeah, that's pretty weird. Let's do that. <laughs> so once again, we set up our array with the same random values as before. It's a little bit backwards this time. So instead of quad, um, quad i dot a equals you know some random value. This time we've got quad dot a i, uh, but it's 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 pretty much the same thing. So yeah, we're storing exactly the same data, and in the end we're going to calculate the same results. We'll see at the end. Uh, of the toot. But here's what it looks like in RAM. So the data now looks something a little bit like the following. We've got a big quads structure, a structure called quads, and it's got three arrays in it. Each of these arrays has 16 million floats. And all of the A values for our quads, the B values and the C values, are all contiguous now. So we've got all of the A's one after another, and then somewhere else in RAM we've got all of the B values one after another for our quads. Uh, somewhere else we've got all of the C values, but the point is that they're contiguous. All of the A values are beside each other. They're beside each other with joy. <laughs> and SSE is very happy to help us out now. Yes, this is a perfect data layout for use with SSE vectors. And we can quickly read four A values, four B values, four C values into the SSE registers and calculate our quadratic roots like nothing. What we have here is a structure of arrays. Okay, so the question is, does it really help? Structure of arrays. We've pretty much turned our data on its head, and uh, it's a fair bit of work. So does it help? The short answer is yes, and the long answer is yes. <laughs> it definitely does. Um, so let's just have a bit of a look at a program to test out exactly how much it helps us. Um, this is my program just here, so uh, it's just got an AVX version that I coded in assembly. We can have a look at that at the end, but that's not really relevant at the moment. Uh, here's my count. Quad count is 16 million, or just 1 by 2 to the power of 24. Uh, here's my structure for AOS, array of structures. Yeah, so that's the um, first version that we looked at, and that's the version that um, SSE doesn't like. Uh, here's my next version, which is my structure of three gigantic arrays. And this will be the version that um, hopefully SSE will um, like to deal with. Um, 
Okay, and here is the first uh, version of the function, yeah, which runs through serially um, using the array of structures format. Yeah, just in plain old C++. And the other version, find root SOA, what I've done for this one is use um, SSE intrinsics in C++. Yeah, so this actually uses a completely different data set. The, um, yeah, array of structures and structures of arrays. For this example, I've set up two uh, copies of all the data, but you wouldn't usually do that. You know, you would set up your data one way and then uh, stick with it. So SOA or AOS. Um, anyway, this is just, I'll scroll through slowly in case for some <laughs> reason people want to type out the same uh, code. Um, and down here I set up the um, array of structures uh, quads. Um, yeah, set up a couple of output arrays so that we can output the uh, roots that we find just in order to check that the um, two algorithms actually give the same answer. Um, I randomize with the, the timer and generate those random values. Yeah, so I generate those random values for the arrays, the array of structures and the structure of, of arrays just by making um, A, B and C values and then setting you know, both, uh, both of those uh, data layouts to exactly the same A, B, C values. Um, yeah, and then we just run through each of the uh, algorithms. Yeah, we just run through each of the algorithms. So if I just hit play and we have a look and see if it's any quicker. The first one you'll see is C++, so there you go. And look at that. <laughs> look at that. So, uh, it's pretty obvious that the SOA versions are much, much faster than AOS. Mm. They're actually a lot faster than four times the speed up, too. Uh, something closer to eight times, maybe. Yeah, so the uh, second group here of 10 runs is uh, the SSE Intrinsics, and that's actually about the same speed as the AVX assembly. And the reason for that is that the bottleneck here is not arithmetic. The bottleneck is uh, memory reads. Yeah, so AVX doesn't happen to help, but I made it in AVX anyway just because I love assembly. <laughs> uh, and the discrepancy count is zero, so the serial C++ code is coming up with exactly the same values, which is good because, you know, we don't often want discrepancies. I would have tolerated a small um, discrepancy there, but, yeah, it happens to be zero. Uh, the other thing is that a lot of these will actually have um, NAN as their answers, since I'm just generating random quads here and... Um, well, you know, from a bunch of random quads, uh, a lot of them will be uh, complex numbers. But, um, yeah, we're just using basic floats here, so there's no complex numbers involved. Uh, what I might do, just for the last bit, is just have a look over here at assembly, just in case anybody cares about the um, uh, AVX version. Yeah, it does the same thing and performs the same as the uh, SSE version using intrinsics. Anyway, that's just a little bit about uh, SOA versus AOS, or AOS versus SOA. It won't always save you, but it's a really good trick to know. So what we've done here is turned our data kind of perpendicular. We've turned it 90 degrees, and uh, it's given us you know, a speed increase, which is really, really good. Uh, and often that will be the case, particularly if you're using SIMD or the graphics card. Cheers, all. See ya.